What's up everybody, and in today's video we're talking all about SEO. I'm Elizabeth Muller, founder of Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency, and the most common question I get from all my clients is how, not only how, but what is SEO and how do I apply it into my website? So in this video we're going to break down all the pieces that it takes to put into your website for SEO. And this is all organically, so you don't have to spend any money and it is all quick and trackable things that you can action on your site today. So we are going to walk through on a screen share all the different locations in your site that you can boost your SEO organically and show you how you can get the best results for your site. We're excited to show you this because it is so easy to put the right steps or to cover the right steps to improve your SEO organically. It's something that we all know we need, but we all don't really know what that means and we don't want to become a technical expert because it's intimidating and it's not a good use of our time, right? So here are some quick things that you can do in action today to help improve your results and I'm going to show you how to track it too. So first thing, you have to have your site be live. So under billing account, billing, make sure you have an upgraded plan. I always say start with the lowest plan, Squarespace will up, uh, let you know if you need to upgrade with any of the features you want to use. Then you want to make sure that your site is published and public. You want to make sure that it is public so that Google can actually get in your site and start getting those results for you. And then you want to make sure your domain is live. So you can have a built-in domain with Squarespace, but you will get better results with an actual domain. So the next step that you're going to take in your analytics panel, search keywords, you are going to connect this to a Gmail address that you have or any any Google account and this will start pulling that it will allow Google to pull and search that data and then you will be able to start tracking your results here. We have a different YouTube video where we go in depth on the Google search keywords panel and how to read it and get the best information out of it and action it in your blogs and keywords and all that. So check out that video and that will give you more of a baseline to uh, what information you can pull and how to use it. So when we when we talk about setting up our site for success, you want to make sure that you have a site title. So under the header, you want to come over here to site title and logo. Just because you have a logo does not mean you do not need to put a site title. This is crucial. And especially if your name represents a neat niche or anything like that, Google wants to see that name there. And then when you come over here, you're in settings still, you want to make sure that your business information is complete too. So if you have a phone number, if you have an email, Physical location is huge. You want to make, if you are a brick and mortar, you want to make sure you're as visible as possible in that area for people that are in that area or going to that area looking for your specific service. So you want to fill out this information. You want to, you want to put a map into your site. So I put a map in here somewhere. Maybe we'll just do it again under edit. You're going to click that content bubble. You're going to scroll down here to map. Make sure you put your physical location. If you have multiple locations, put them all in there. And whatever design aesthetic you want to add it in, having that map there as a physical location is going to help propel you in those search results. Now, when it comes to page titles, there's a couple things here that I want you to focus on. So when you click this cog or gear next to the title, you have different options for naming your site, uh, just your URL slug, everything. So your page title, this is what is going to show in Google. So you want to make sure it's all encompassing for that page. Maybe add a keyword here that is going to represent the content in the page just a little more thoroughly because that is what is going to show in Google. Navigation title, that is what is going to show up in your navigation. And you want to make sure that this is short and simple. Um, and your URL slug, make sure that matches your navigation title or close to it so that when it does show at the top in the URL, it makes the most sense. So in this SEO tab, this is what is going to show in Google. So you want to make sure that this, you just want to double check this because here, this is when I created the page. This was from many edits ago. Um, you want to make sure this reflects in another all-encompassing. So again, kind of in line with this page title, but you can also put it here as well. Um, and then a description. So this automatically pulls from the page, but I would recommend going to every page and making a one sentence quick description that's easily digestible. 
And then when you come down here, so store best practices, you wanna make sure, again, that the SEO tab is filled out here. So you go into your item, and under your SEO here, this again, this is your title. So maybe if your shop is a certain niche or you know, if it's right now, custom face masks are huge. So maybe you put custom face mask shop and then the type of face mask and then enter the description, tell a little bit about it was generate interest so that way you can get those clicks. And then if you are physical location, um, you wanna put your location in here as well which I can't seem to remember to find. Oh, I'm sorry, that is a blog feature. So let's transition into blog because there are some things that you wanna do with your blog. Blog especially because this is where you are going to use that keyword research and put the keyword in the title. You're gonna put it in the content. You are gonna make sure that these keywords, you're not overdoing it because that would be called stuffing. So you could actually get penalized for using too many keywords or too many variations of it because you're overdoing it. So you want to use it in a very systematic way. So in your title, and then maybe the first line of your blog is talking about it a little bit further or hitting another keyword that's associated with it, whatever the strategy is. Best practice here, heading one and heading two is what Google scans for. So make sure your biggest, boldest points are clear and short and heading one and two, and that's throughout your site. When we come over here to SEO, again, maybe you are elaborating on the title just a little bit more so that it looks right up here. Looks like we're glitching a little bit. And then your description as well. So you're, you may have an excerpt here that shows on your shop page, but maybe it needs to be a little bit different for someone that isn't used, to, I'm sorry, from your um, blog page, but maybe that needs to be a little bit different for someone that may not have ever seen your site before. So you can play around with different ways to share your content for the familiarity of the different people that could find you, have found you before. Just make sure, making sure that you're catering to everyone so they have a full understanding. Under share, and no, I'm sorry, location, again, brick and mortar, local business front, put it here. If you are servicing all of the country, I wouldn't, um, but you could if you are trying to get more results in a certain area. So that brings me to the content on your actual pages. So if we go to our home page, so again, heading one, heading two is what is pulled by Google. So make sure you have the right keywords there. Make sure you're not overdoing it. You want to make sure that you're writing your content so that's quick and actionable because the more engagement you get on your site, the more boosting and results you're going to see in your SEO. So if you are writing paragraphs and paragraphs of information, no one's going to want to sit there and read it. People are inherently lazy. They're not going to want to consume all that information. They want what they need and they want it quick and right away. So if you like this would be perfect if you're describing a certain topic header that kind of summarizes it or alludes to it. Quick, basic description about it. And then Something else that promotes a lot of great engagement on your site, which will again boost your SEO, is linking to other pages in your site. So if people are on your site and they're clicking around your site and going to the different pages, it, you will be rewarded for that because it will be seen as a high engagement site. You're producing so much information that people are going all over to consume it. So you want to encourage links. That's why in the home page, I focus on that dynamic home page. And again, we have another video for that. I'll put a link to it in the notes and breaking down what should go in the home page, and we kind of summarize each page with a link or a button to each page for more information and getting those clicks to those different pages or maybe linking to a blog article or a page with videos. All of that is promoting engagement, so you want to keep it as simple as possible for people to read. So those big, bold headlines that tell exactly what it, you're doing or quick summarizing sentences to keep people on your site longer and to continue with that engagement. So. We hit the blog, we hit the shop. Let's talk about images, image titles. So if you click that pencil there, here's your file name. This looks terrible. So sometimes when an image is loading or it's broken or something like that, it's gonna show the title. So you wanna make sure that this is a, a good descriptor of what the image is and how it pertains to your site. Again, we're not overdoing it or overloading it, just quick. So hike, uh, group, you know, it looks like a group of people and then maybe 
location, something like that that pertains to the image. So if it didn't load or if it's pulling up differently, someone can still see and know exactly what, how it pertains to your website. So that is that pretty much wraps it up. We, we have how to set up your site, how to have the proper names for your pages, types of content to put in, and uh, images, links, all that good stuff. So you do all these, go, go through the checklist, um, and you'll be set up for getting great, great results organically. Now, paid ads is always going to be the best way to go because you're targeting the, the right demographic and maybe the right budget. But as we're growing and scaling organically, this is going to set you up for success. I hope you got a ton of value in that walkthrough. If you have any questions, follow-up comments, or anything that you'd like to see in an upcoming video, please leave a comment below and make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any other walkthroughs. If you're a business and you need help, if you're stuck, that's what we're here for. We're happy to serve you. You can find our email below too. All the links mentioned in the walkthrough are below as well. And then as a special bonus for you, all these steps, I put them into a download PDF for you so you can follow along and check the boxes as you go through your site. So the link is below for that free download. And thank you for being here. We'll see you on the next video. I'm Elizabeth with Bloom Website Design, a Squarespace Design Agency.